What's up, you guys? This is Warren with Scale Audio, and today we're going to talk about how to make bass audible on phones, crappy systems, and things alike. Uh, this is especially difficult when it comes to having a smooth bass that isn't very uh, grainy or distorted. But there are simple solutions to make it work, and I will show you how to make that thing that's difficult easy. Let's take a look. So first thing we're starting with here is I have this bass coming through Serum. And if you don't have subwoofers, you are not going to hear this bass. I will pull up parametric EQ with a visual so we can look at it and you will see why. Okay, that is sub information. That, that's pretty much all that's there is sub information. So <clears throat> we're going to start out here dealing with the worst of the worst when it comes to making this audible on other systems. So there's a few things you can do for a solution to this. Um, one thing that I used to do, but I don't do as much when I didn't have the tools I have now is I would take the bass, for example, where's my bass track? Okay. Let's clone this cause I'm pretty sure it's legato. Okay. So I would do something like this. I would pitch it up an octave. Okay, I'm gonna run it to its own insert. I would do something like this. I would have a bass that I'm going to be using aside this one, an octave up that I would either run to a mix bus or that I would run straight into the effects chain here. Now, since we'd be adding a bunch of effects, I would run it to this effects chain. And if I did want to run it to a mix bus, I'd run it through this effects chain first, and then I would export it through the effects chain and then route it somewhere else. I'll actually do that with ad libs for vocals. Once I get the main vocal how I want, I'll run all the ad libs through that processing and print them. That way I can run them on their own channels and I can be creative with them, but they will sound like the main vocal or close enough in balance that um, we get a good sounding mix. So for the bass, however, if we listen, we have an octave up, we're going to just start adding some high end. Now, you might not hear that on your systems, depending on your speakers. Uh, let's take a look at the parametric EQ, but you can see it. Okay, we're closer to that 100 mark. About that 100 mark and higher is where you're going to start hearing it on systems. Um, I usually aim for some information from the 100 to probably about the 300, 400 mark. Uh, any higher than that is very welcome and will help you bring it through. But I mean, we at least want to be getting close to this 500 here uh, to make it very audible and nice. And it doesn't need to be allowed there. You just need to have harmonic information there. So You could even pitch it up another octave and mess with it that way, and this would help give you a clean bass and more information. I don't always want to sit there and go through and print and move stuff up an octave, and depending on the sample you're using for a bass, the more you move it up an octave and stretch it, the you know you might get artifacts you don't like, things like that. So let's take that away. The next thing you can do is you can add some harmonic information with tools that are designed to do so, like our bass from Waves. And what our bass from Waves is going to do is it's going to take information from lower in the frequency spectrum, and it's going to push it up higher into the frequency spectrum and create harmonics and, you know, different artifacts that are actually pleasing in that area. And so you'll notice a huge difference. We'll load up our bass. Now I'm going to turn the intensity down just so I don't get blown away <laughs> right at the start. So, and we'll move this above our EQ so we can see what's going on. So we're cresting about right there. Turn this back on. Not much changing, right? If I boosted this, you can instantly hear it's a different story. See all that? All of that 
is the information being moved up that I'm talking about, okay? So I don't want so much low in this base. I don't want to add low. It's very low powerful. So what I would do is I would move this up and I would start copying some of the higher frequencies. Let's say 122 and up. So now at 122 and up, if we play it, See that? I didn't really add much sub right there. What I did add was from 122 and up. Let's push it even farther. See, now I'm adding more information here. Now what's happening though is you might not have heard that as well as the last one because I've got to boost the intensity because the information it's copying is quieter information. Now you should have been able to hear it. That's the idea of our bass and other plugins like it. There's also Max Bass. I use this on my uh, bus mixes and my masters a lot. It used in conjunction with, let me move this down. Some multiband compression via dynamic EQ. We can get a really good effect. So first thing I'm gonna do is we want to create headroom to turn up the other frequencies. And this is something that you can do uh, without our bass as well. Try and solve your problem if you have any kind of multiband EQ. So we're going to play this. See that I want to set this threshold down. So I just really turn that bass down. Now what I can do because I really turn that bass down is I can really turn that bass up. Now that I've done that, we should hear it a little bit. Better with our max bass. You still might not be able to hear that. Okay, we are boosting farther up the frequency spectrum. I mean, if we take a look, see all that harmonic information right there? We aren't resonating and creating and shifting the way our bass does. If I take it away, you'll see. But we're really bringing that up, right? So that's cool. <clears throat> this is something you can do in conjunction with these things or by itself, is we are going to do some saturation. I'll show you without and then with. So without. With saturation, I'll make it heavy so we see what's going on. We got a lot happening there, right, compared to before. And the last thing you can do is if we took this, our original base here, and I'm going to run it to this channel. So now we have a complete duplicate of this original base coming through here. So as I turn it up, all it does is the base gets more powerful. It's not really what we want. What we do want, however, is we want to create that upwards information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distort our base here. This might be kind of a heavy distortion. Um, we're going to mute this so we just get this information. Honestly, that sounds pretty damn good right there. Let's look at it in our EQ. See all of that high-end information? That's the stuff we're looking for. That's what we want to start bringing in. Now, you might not want a really distorted sound. So uh, if you don't want a distorted sound, you can affect this in other ways, like previously shown, or Camel Crusher, which is free and amazing, has this clean British setting, which is great. And you're still going to have a lot of high-end here. So if you actually took this and... Right? So now if we put this behind our base, it should start becoming audible on other devices. And if you do want to go for that uh, 
hard distortion. Right? So, to make your bass audible on different tracks, depending on what you're going for, you will do one of these three things. First things first, if you want it to sound smooth and you don't want distortion, you're either going to octave it up and start bringing it in, or if that's not what you're going for or that's not going to work because of the sample, then instead you're going to take your bass and you're going to use tools like our bass and use some really soft saturation to create smooth harmonics, not something heavy, not distorting, not straight up just you aren't destroying the sound but something with smooth harmonics. And if you are going for a heavier bass, then you can just distort and bring in a second layer of your bass over that, okay? Um, send it off to its own channel, distort the crap out of it, send them both to a bus, bring up the volume of the distorted one until you get a balance you like. And if you need to, EQ the distorted one so that it sits and blends the way that you want it. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you know better what you're looking for and how to get there. Uh, if you liked the video, please like. If you have any comments, please comment. And I always appreciate a subscribe. This is Warren with Scale Audio and Audios.